called The Ghost Next Door by Wiley Goat St. John. Chapter 1. She used to live here. Now, we're only going to read one chapter at a time of this one, okay? So, we're only going to do the first chapter, and then we will move, then, either tomorrow or the next day, you know, as Gracie comes, as we're, we're reading, as it's reading time. I might never have gotten involved with the ghost next door if it hadn't been for Eddie and Kirk, my kid brothers. I don't know why I should feel responsible for those two, but I do. As my best friend Tammy says, blood is thicker than plasma. Her father, da Dr. David Greenfield, is a professor at the medical college, so Tammy ought to know, even if he is a psychiatrist instead of a regular doctor. Tammy are both going on 13, and we'd re we're really big blondes if only our mothers would let us have a color rinse. Eddie's only nine, and Kirk's just six. We don't want them hanging around with us, but sometimes they do anyway. We live on the edge of a small city in Georgia named Georgetown because George Washington visited here once. Our side of the block has just three houses. The Marrows, that's us, live in the middle one, between the old Alston place and the Greenfields. We all have green big yards. Everybody has their around here, and the Greenfields have a tennis court, and Miss Judith Alston has a fish pond way off in the back, past her summer house. The pond is deep out in the middle, and that's where Miss Judith's little niece, Meredith, got drowned a long time ago. Ever since that time, Miss Judith has lived by herself. She's a tall, old maid lady who believes in ESP and spiritualism and all that stuff. But she likes children once she gets used to them, especially girls like us. For a while, after Miranda died, Miss Judith couldn't stand the sight of children. I heard Mama say once, because it hurt too much. Seeing any living child made her remember that Miranda wasn't. But that accident happened before I was born. After we got to know Miss Judith pretty well, she showed Tammy and me the child's picture, which she kept on her piano. It was tinted photo. Miranda's eyes looked kind of brown and green, and her hair was dark brown and sort of floppy. She was only 10. Her chin was pointed and her cheeks were thin. Miss Judith said she was a fairy child with a pixie face. Miss Judith told us how she tried to get in touch with Meredith through a spiritualist group she had joined a few months before. The Georgetown chapter of the American Psych Society. But she had no luck. You believe in that stuff, Miss Judith. Well, we don't really know, do we, Lindsay? She said sort of wistfully. If there's the slightest possibility, well, there's no harm in trying. I don't believe in it myself, and neither does Tammy. But we didn't tell her that. Miss Judith was sitting on the piano bench, and the fingers on her hand, absent-minded, picked out a hesitating little tune. Her house is an old-fashioned one with high ceilings, and the notes echoed and seemed to come back from somewhere very soft. What's that you're playing, Miss Judith? Tammy shocked. She stopped, but the echo went on for a minute. Was I? Miss Judith looked at her right hand as it belonged to somebody else. Yes, I guess I was. It's a piece called The Dance of the Fireflies. Miranda used to practice it over and over. She was going to play it in the recital that summer. I knew it wasn't polite to ask questions, but I was dying to know, and she seemed to be in a good mood, so I dared. Miss Judith, how did Miranda happen to be living with you instead of with her own father and mother? I had already asked Mama, but she said she'd have to tell me all about it when I got older. Tammy's folks moved here only five years ago, so she couldn't find out either. At least they said they didn't know. When grown-ups say they don't know, you never can be sure whether it's the truth or not. But Miss Judith told us, why, Lindsay, her father and mother were divorced, and she was supposed to live with, with, with her father. He is my youngest brother, and they lived here in the old family home for several years, while he was connected with that space research project across the river. He was working for the government, you know, so he had to be away a lot, especially that spring. Yes, and I said, I know, Dr. Olston is a very famous scientist. My dad told us that he's a nuclear engineering expert. Nuclear en energy expert. But we've never met him. He never has been back, Miss Judith said, and her voice was sad. He asked for a transfer to Houston. He couldn't bear to be here without Miranda, you see. There were so many things to remind him and I. She sounded as if she were about to cry. So I hurried to say, Her picture's nice, Miss Judith. And I bet she would have been great in the recital. And I almost thought, I heard the music echoing again. But then I've 
been told I have a vivid imagination. Yes, Miss Judith said, blinking her eyes and not crying after all. She was very artistic and sensitive. Her own mother was interested in psychic things. That's why I thought we might get something from the other side. It's really why I joined the Psychic Society. Miranda would have been some kind of creative artist when she grew up, I'm sure. She used to like to help make, help me make unusual things. She would say, we're good makers, aren't we? What did you make? Tammy asked with interest. Well, let's see. We made strange colored flowers. Did you know a daisy will turn green if you put it in green food coloring and leave it in a while to draw the color up its stem? We made a blue rose out of the white one, too. And the Queen Anne's lace, that was the prettiest of all, when we turned it all sorts of colors. That's neat. I'd like to try it, Tammy said. Mother's got some food coloring, and the Queen Anne's lace is about to bloom right now. Be sure to cut the stem above the joint or through the joint, Miss Judith warned, or it'll be hard for the color to get through. And once we made a bird bath out of pretty color bits of broken glass in China, set like a mosaic pattern into the cement. I wonder what became of that bird bath. Oh, and, oh yes, the cement owl. I never did find the cement owl, she began to laugh a little. She kind of laughed nearly crying. I haven't brought out the owl for a long time. She went on. Ranjo wanted to make an owl. She said with love, its eyes. Okay, we're going to stop right there. I don't have that much time. And we're going to find out if Grace wants me to keep reading this book or yes, read a different one. Okay, not now. And we're going to read it later. Anyway, we got to get going for now. Just preview. Don't worry. I'll keep reading where we left off. And I will post it on here. So if you can't re listen now, you can listen later. And I'll get into it a little bit. It's the first time reading this book. I've never read this one before. And uh, Gracie wanted me to read it to her. She's really big in the Halloween and witches. Here and... was the last book that we yep. read. So, hope everybody has a great day. We will talk to everybody soon, okay? I say everybody. And like I said, tonight is um, Day of the Reflections night. And uh, next time Gracie's here, we will go to the next part of the book. And Gracie will read also. Have a good one, everybody. Say bye.